and I'm going to open up a transit file. So, um, actually, before I do that, I'll show you what I showed in class last night, but let's go and prepare a transit network. So I'm going to go here to go into transit, and this says transit 2019. And I know that I want to create a new transit file. So I'm going to just change this to say transit 2050. And inside of there are some names, and I don't want to change these names because the program is set up to find these names. So you can't change the names of these things without changing the internal program. Um, Okay, I'm going to open up uh, um, well, I'm going to use Ultra Editor, but but you can open it with anything. All right, so now these semicolons in front of this represent um, uh, comments so that the program won't read that row but I do want it to read these other rows because I want to find out what these are root 1 2 3 4 I, I don't know what they are but I want to find out so basically I'm going down through here to turn on these routes okay so that turns them on close and save the file yep and now I have a 2050 setup that without deleting the 2019 so I can always go back to what I had before now I'm going to click here and open the transit network browse for go up one level down into transit here's my transit 2050 and I it, it's looking for the dot lin file so I'm going to control click to get both of them and open and say all done. Okay, so now the uh, transit um, files are here. So, all right. So next, what am I going to do next? So I want to look at them, and if I click on the arrow to click on one, then I'm clicking, and I, all I see is the road and the road attributes. But I wanted to see the transit. So the way I do that is I come to this arrow and make this the top layer level and here's the transit so when I click on it I get the transit route now what you see is that anything with a big dot is a stop anything with a little dot is not a stop so um, so here's a little dot the centroid connector is at this little dot here's another centroid connector at this dot but what it means is that people from this zone will have to walk out here to this little dot but then they have to keep walking to the big dot before they can get on the actual bus so if you wanted them to be able to get on here then you have to make this into a big dot and the way you do that is you click on that and it's highlighted over here that it's a um, that that's the, the number that we're on 1736 and the minus sign means it's not a stop if I click in there and hit and change that and then hit the arrow then you can see that it changed into a big dot so that's one way you can um, edit stops okay so some more things about transit let's keep looking so when I click on this bus right here it uh, kind of loops around and does things it's it's defined as one way equals one which means yes this is a one-way bus so in other words the bus will go around here come back this way do a figure eight but there's no bus going in the opposite direction so if you wanted if you got on the bus here intending to go here you have to go all the way around the figure eight loop in order to get to here um, so if you change this to two to a zero that means that now the bus there's two buses one going um, clock or around the figure eight this way and the other one going the other direction and so that's a little more direct it takes twice as much uh, horsepower in the transit system to do that but it does get people 
to where they're going a little more directly. Um, but they may not actually operate it that way, so that's why they have the one way. Um, but now let's look at this other route right here. This one is also defined as a one way, even though the great majority of it is actually kind of traversing the very same space. So this is a kind of an awkward construction because when I click on this link right here, there's um, 11, 27. There will be another 11, 27 somewhere else um, in this because it's coming back on itself. So I'm, that's a hard thing to do. I don't really like that. And it's also that they can do this tiny little loop around the college, or which doesn't really even matter. Um, it, it, it barely matters. So what I'm going to do is just reconstruct this route. I'll show you how to do that. So, um, And I don't like it going down here either. I would rather it go on St. George Boulevard the whole no actually that's a pretty good place for it um, all right so anyway let's change it so in order to change it I have to find well I, I guess I don't I'm just gonna rebuild the whole thing pretty much so I'm gonna come up to here and start removing rows so you can see it unbuilding itself as I remove rows. So the only thing I'm keeping is the 1183, which I'm not even exactly sure where that is, but but you can see it unbuilding the the loop. Um, and okay, and now I'm down to just two instances of 1183. I only even want one instance, so now I'm going to say okay. Now I have a route that's only one point long, and now I'm going to, I could either insert a row or I'm going to edit, edit route. So this time I'm going to say, I want to stop here because I'm right near the college, so I, I want to be next to the, that centroid as much as possible. And I'll have a stop here, and then I'm going to go click on this one, and it automatically finds the shortest path to that. Um, and I'll just stop. Probably this is a local bus and I don't actually care. I just want it to stop, not make it too hard for people to get on it. So I'm going to stop all over the place. And um, here's a spot. I'll skip a stop. Here's a spot. I'll skip it. And then I want to go at least as far as the other bus, whoops, like right there, so that people have a transfer opportunity. So then the way that you finish it is I think you have to hit the escape button because there's no thing, nothing over here. So I'm going to hit escape. And then that takes me out of editing mode. And then I'm going to hit uh, save current item. So now that bus is finished, sort of finished, except that it's one way. So that it means it'll only take you away from the college, but not to it. So I have to change this to a zero now, which means one way. That that's what it, how you define two way. And it's similar to what we had before, um, I think. I can't remember. Actually, it went on St. George Boulevard for part of it. But in my 2050, I'm going to say, hey, I like this path better. This is pick up more people right here. Um, it, Probably, but you'd actually have to run it. You could say, well, what about here versus there? Which way gets more people? That's the point of the travel demand model is to test those things. All right. So now here's a loop, and, and we'll say that's one way because that looks like a good loop. This one is also a pretty good loop, so we'll leave that like that. Um, some of the things I want to change, though, about 24. I want to assume that in 2050 people have really made a serious investment in transit and these are going to be 10 minutes um, so that you only have to wait on average 5 minutes because if the vehicle comes every 10 minutes then maybe the most you have to wait is 5 minutes and so 10, 10 
and here I'm going to do 10, 10 as well, and on this one. So now my entire system is 10 minute frequency, which is super good. And then there is one route that I didn't identify here, and it's called dummy right now. Um, but I'm going to change that. I can't change the name dummy yet, but I I do want to say that this is also on 10 minute. This looks like a campus circulator of some sort. Um, and we'll just assume that it's also like 10. Now it's defined as one way. So that's kind of a mistake because um, how is anyone supposed to get back? It's not making a loop, so there's got to be some way that people can get back. Well, maybe it is making a loop, um, actually. Um, I think if I look at this 1183 here, and uh, no, it's not making a loop because I it's it, this is the entire string of nodes. Whoops. Um, don't do that. Let's hit cancel. So if I click on, as I click on each point, you can see it moving down the list. And then this is the very last one. So this is actually should be a two and that's a mistake in the coding. So whoever designed this route did it wrong. Oh, it must be a zero or a one. Whoops. So it should be a zero. Okay. So now that's correct. All right, if you remember from this file, this uh, explains what the modes are. Mode 4, 5, 6, 7, bus, BRT, express bus, and light rail. So this is internal to the model um, that uh, it understands that light rail, all else being equal, is more attractive than a bus. Like if they both had 15-minute uh, headways, then people will prefer light rail over bus even though the frequency is the same. And if the speed was the same, whatever else things, they still are going to prefer light rail over bus. So that's in an alternative specific constant that we talked about in class a little bit. But in order to take advantage of those alternative specific constants, I have to define it as that thing. So I'm going back to here, um, and I'm going to say, right now, this route is just a local bus but I want it to be considered a bus rapid transit, so I'm going to make it a 5, because that's what bus rapid transit was. Now, it is true that bus rapid transit, in order to be bus rapid transit, um, usually wouldn't have this many stops on it. So if I go in, I can put a negative in there, say that one's not a stop, and this one's not really a stop. And uh, so and this one's not really a stop. So you can define actual stations and stops this way. So now it's a little more, so this would help it in practicality go faster. So the next thing I want to do is help it in, uh, in the model go faster. So I'm going to insert a row here and look at what my options are. And in class, I showed you a speed. So if you've done some work, where's the speed option? Oh, there's a speed. Okay, so you can insert speed, and then you hit cancel if you don't want to insert another one. And you can just say, I did my homework, and I can tell that this bus would go um, 25 miles per hour in this section after you consider stoplights and everything else. Um, and and that's starting from down here, starting here, and between here and here, that's where it starts at 25. And then if I click over here, I can say this is the next spot, so I'm at this spot, so I right click at that location. No, I don't right click, sorry. I insert row and it inserts there and I say speed right here. So then I don't need to insert a second speed. I say, okay, now I'm on a straightaway where I know I can go 30 miles an hour. All right, so now it's going to say, okay, from here to the end of the route is going to be 30 miles an hour unless I change it by inserting yet another thing. So that's one way to do it. Here's another way to do it. So if we insert row and look at my options, there's a thing called time fact. 
I'm not sure why there's time fact one through five. I'd have to go to the help and understand, try to learn about why there's five different choices for this. But I'm just going to assume that one will do it. And instead of being 25 miles an hour, what I want to do here is I just want to say, well, 0.7. Um, and what that does, now I'd have to get rid of the speed because otherwise it's a, it reads the speed, but then it immediately reads this and then ignores the speed, so there's not really a point in the speed anymore, so I'll, I'll remove that. So what this means is that whatever the speed was going to be, and I think it was usually like 60% of the, uh, um, the vehicle speed, this means make the time 70% um, of that, or in other words, faster. Make it 30% faster than it was before, meaning that it only takes um, 7 seconds instead of 10 seconds uh, to get um, from point to point. So that's another way you can do that. All right, the next thing I wanted to show you with transit is about the transit line manager and this display lines and show stops and nodes. So let's just see that a little bit. So it, once I have opened up a transit line, then I think this these lines are, sh are shown here. And I maybe you can open this without having to open this first, but I'm not sure. Anyway, this shows what files are in there. And I can edit those files directly through an editor because they're just ASCII files. Or I can come in here and edit them. So like dummy, I don't really like that name. I want to call it Campus Shuttle. And uh, then over here, Route 1, 2, 3, 4. I don't know. Maybe I'll call um, one of them a BRT. I can't remember which one that I made a BRT, but I'm gonna change this one to name. Whoops, I don't want to copy it. Just want to rename it. I'll call it BRT um, St. George Boulevard. And uh, there you go. So that's a little bit about this thing and I will uh, exit now. And then with display lines, you can click on this and it shows which um, uh, routes are going to get displayed. So I want to just click on that. And it turns out I selected the wrong one. I just guessed that this was St. George Boulevard, but it's not. I'm not going to fix it because that would make the video too long. But anyway, go back to here, turn them all on. And then the other thing is to show stop nodes. And this shows that I'm going to display stop nodes in this color and on that one. And then this then shows everything that is a stop and everything that's not a stop. So one thing that's interesting about this is you can see right here that there's some spots that is a stop for one bus but not for another. That's kind of a problem because you won't be able to transfer from one to another that, unless they're all defined as stops. So you'd want to go in and find the route that has where these are not stops and make them into stops probably. Here, the reason that some of these are stops and not stops is because they are um, going over the top of themselves. So this 1202 is a stop sometimes, but but here it is down here. It's not a stop in the other. And that's just how you have to code these uh, one-way routes when they're loops. Um, they just have to be like that when they go over the same segment twice. Now I'm going to hit the clear button and that makes everything go away. And it's still here. I can get back to it by just displaying them again. But that is the end of the transit um, input preparation for right now. I'm going to go ahead and do something different now. So that's the end of that.